it's Elliot. Uh, if you're any involved with the chronic illness community, you probably know that this month, May, is um, Ehlers Danlos Syndrome and Hypermobility -mob Spectrum Disorders Awareness Month. Um, and um, the EDS Society has put out a really cool thing. Um, I was nervous. Called um, either, depending on what your diagnosis is, my EDS challenge or my HST um, challenge. And so um, I have a hypermobility spectrum disorder. And the day one challenge, I recognize that it is not May 1st, um, but finals. Um, and the day one challenge, it was to talk about uh, your journey to diagnosis. I actually, I'm gonna sit like this so you can peep my shirt. My friend Lauren signed these and they're really cool. But that was unreal, <laughs> unrelated. Um, but the day one challenge is journey to diagnosis. I had typed up a whole really long Instagram post and I accidentally lost it. I spent like an hour writing it. Um, but, doesn't matter, I realized it was long enough that I decided I was going to do a video instead because there was just a lot, but it, I'm not upset. I, I kind of like got, realized more about myself from that process. Um, and now I kind of know what I'm going to say to you and I hopefully won't, um, beat around the bush too much. But given the fact that it, we are over a minute and a half into this video and I haven't even started, we know that I'm going to beat around the bush. Um, so, hypermobility spectrum disorder, or HSD, um, refers to a disorder of, um, your, all of your connective tissue, um, and it's something you're born with, um, but different things can trigger when it starts. So, a lot of people with EDS and HSD, um, have, like, a time they can distinguish in their life of like when things got worse but usually like you can look back and see little things and I'm I can also do that so I, if I look back on my childhood there's like little things um like you know I, I I was actually gonna make a whole video at some point about like early overlooked signs um that I had my illnesses and I still probably will because I'm not I don't really have time to go into all of that in this video because it's only the beginning but like um I at like New Year's of this year, I, I found out like our, one of our close family friends who, um, I've known since I was a baby, like, um, like she's the mom of one of my best friends and we were in a play group together and our moms were in like a birth class together when we were little. Um, so she's like family said was, I was telling her about my disorder and stuff. And one thing with it is poor proprioception. And Christy was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. When I had, she gave, told me the story of when I was like a toddler. I was like walking, talking, I was walking and I fell down, kept talking and got back up, like just tripped over my feet, kept, fell down, got up and just was talking the whole time. I remember constantly bumping my head. I always had a bruise of some sort. I was actually extremely like proud, I guess, of my bruises because I thought they made me look tough. Unnamed gender dysphoria. I mean, not really. I just was really, um protective of like my tomboy status and I felt like I always had bruises on my legs and I still do um but you know like little things like that um you know I had some I, I distinctly remember um like in elementary school especially like fourth fifth grade I'd sometimes just like be limping and I was like what is this like why why am I like why what's going on like something would hurt and I'd just be limping and I'd be very confused um I also, you know, like everyone, just about, I feel like with um, hypermobility spectrum disorder or EDS was kind of like, I don't know if I ever went, like, went to the doctor as far as pain, um, like, but like my mom and everybody, like all the adults were like, no, oh, it's growing pains. Um, so I'd always be really confused. Like I'd be having pain in my legs and I'd be like, oh, okay, I must be growing. And then I didn't like I would get my height checked and it hadn't, I hadn't had a growth spurt and I'd be like, okay, that's weird, whatever. Um, but like I, you know, stuff like that. I, something that I just remember the other day is, you know, like head banging. I, I remember like, why do people do this? It hurts so much. Um, and you know, stuff like that. Like 
I don't know I also have like really bad handwriting and I always have but it was never like I was never in like I had it corrected because I learned to write when I was kind of young but you know like little things but nothing really too major um although I was born when I was little they thought I might have hip dysplasia but then when the, the other doctor looked at it um it was like no you're not but like I wonder if maybe my hip was hypermobile and they thought it might be that I don't know that's speculation um and uh what else there's another thing I was about to say but I forgot oh yeah um just I had like just various things and I mean you know, it was never really a big deal um and then you know uh for a lot of people with um like EDS and HSD um it's, things start to get worse around like puberty I mean I hit puberty kind of late but I my dad and I used to have this this like joke between the two of us um we used to say that I must have had a 12 year warranty and because when I ran, turned 13 it ran out um because when I was 13 I had um Severs disease in my foot um which is kind of like um pediatric plantar fasciitis but like not quite the same it's like the cartilage in your heel and I'm like that's connective tissue <laughs> but whatever I was in a boot for like months because of that um in sixth grade I um I think it was sixth grade yeah that's when I swam um I like pulled a muscle in my um like groin area like in my upper thigh doing breaststroke um because I like swam out too wide my hips are my most hypermobile joint you know like things like that I um like threw my back out a few times um I would get hurt a lot in gymnastics and it was like um like every week um I feel like I was I didn't ever comp do get gymnastics like competitively I was like just in gymnastics like once a week um and I was always kind of twisting my ankle um I always have been I've had so many sprained ankles I haven't gone to the doctor like most of the time um like and I would only ever like tell my parents um, when things, when it was, like, bad enough that I thought I should go to the doctor, but my mom was like, you can't go to the doctor every time you get hurt, and I'm like, I just don't tell you, but, like, I was just getting hurt so much that my mom thought I was, like, crying wolf or whatever. Um, also, POTS is a common, um, comorbidity, um, with the two, and it's actually, like, the one that I can kind of more distinctly pinpoint, um, from a younger age, I guess, um, I remember very, very, like, vividly my first ever dizzy spell that I had in sixth grade. I was in, um, computer tech in our, like, weird, like, temporary classrooms in the gym that they hadn't done yet because they were, like, doing renovations or whatever. I'm being so dizzy and going down to the nurse's office and just, like, going home early and then I, like, had more and, um, so I can kind of distinctly pinpoint when my POTS kind of really started. I mean probably had symptoms earlier but you know like that kept happening um but um we didn't really we weren't super worried about it like I went to the doctor and they were like we don't really know like they tested me for like anemia and I didn't have that and um it, you know things hadn't really been picked up like things didn't really pick up yet like the school nurse was like I, I don't really know like vitals are okay um like they're the my like finger like the beds of my fingernails or whatever I was didn't like going to the nurse unless I had to in middle school um so I didn't go a lot but like in high school I had to a lot but that's next so then I kind of <sighs> distinguish things in a couple different phases of my life um I guess not phases I don't know that's not the best word but then I started high school um and I was in marching band which I loved so much but I did struggle with it um I think I started having falls in like ninth or tenth grade um I'm not sh I don't I say falls but they're like I don't always pass out fully but I like it's related to the pots um and I remember sometimes having to sit out for a while because I was so dizzy and at one point my, my band director told me like I had I was to bring Gatorade to every practice um and I did um luckily I never I would think there was one time that I came kind of close because at this point it was just an occasional falling but I I like miss things because I'd be really dizzy like I remember one time I like I couldn't go to a friend's birthday party and like because it was like after band and I was just too dizzy um and I played the sousaphone um which is you don't know like the marching tube but like the big one and it sits on your shoulder like it's been years since I marched my shoulders I can still feel the difference in the muscle tone from that um and but you know things like that um 
there's a fly. <laughs> um, but I distinctly remember, I, oh, no, 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 that's, I, that was another thing. Um, but I was also, why am I so distracted by this fly? Whatever. <laughs> fly on the wall. <laughs> I'm not funny. Um, okay. Uh, but I was, like, my main thing in high school is I was really, really severely mentally ill. Like, I had really, really bad anxiety disorder, um, and depression, and OCD, and I, and, like, um, I, my phobia, which I think they misdiagnosed, like, I'm pretty sure it's PTSD, like, I have trauma stuff, and I'm not trying to, like, self-diagnose, I just got so many diagnoses, like, that I'm not sure which ones were accurate and which ones weren't, um, during this time, um, and as far as, like, I've had therapists, like, we talk about trauma, like, I'm not trying to self-diagnose, but, like, they got diagnosed, my first diagnosis was a phobia. I need to make a whole other video about that, um, <laughs> but because I was experiencing that a lot, like, at the same time, um, and I was, I was in and out of the hospital, like, I, and when I say the hospital, I mean, like, behavioral health, um, hospitals, um, so I had, like, and, like, partial and stuff, so I, I was experiencing anxiety, like, I have a severe anxiety disorder, like, which I think made things harder, um, and so I remember, like, it got to the point where I was just too dizzy, and I was, like, missing school, um, and so we saw my doctor and she sent me to the cardiologist at the children's hospital of philadelphia so chop which is like you know you, if you're not like super familiar with stuff like i think more and more people with more chronic illnesses kind of have their own gripes with chop of different departments i don't know exactly um but i saw a cardiologist at there and they're like a world-renowned children's hospital you know you would think so would be good but i saw the cardiologist there and he, a cardiologist, I should have seen, I, we should have waited to see the pot specialist, but like, we were still new to the whole thing. My mom just wanted to, to get like the soonest appointment we could, um, make sure I was okay. But the cardiologist that I saw, um, you know, was like, yeah, you look fine. You're, you seem fine. Um, because my doctor referred me because she was like, well, I can order a two day Holter monitor test, but the cardiologist could order a longer one. Um, and I brought up POTS and he was like, yeah, you know, that's not really like, you know, it's not like really a real disorder. Um, you know, it's just a bunch of symptoms. Like, you know, it's not, it's not a diagnosis that, you know, he basically told me POTS wasn't real. Uh, and that I didn't want to undergo the testing for it. Um, and so after that, my pediatrician, not my pediatrician, my primary care doctor, I've been going to the same practice, family practice, like for a really long time. Um, but I've seen different doctors within that. Um, time. Um, she told me, you know, the doctor was like, well, if the cardiologist isn't worried, like, you know, it's fine. Um, so then I saw a neurologist, and what's complicated in this is that around the time of seeing, actually, they started getting bad, like, the night I had, I, like, I had one, like, I, I, like, kind of around the time that they were doing the testing, I started having, um, the, so, psychogenic non-epileptic events or, um, like, they, whenever I was in the hospital, they called them pseudo seizures. So basically, um, this is my description of the experience. I don't know if this is like the way they clinically describe this, but basically I had panic attacks, um, or I would dissociate and then I would kind of dissociate so badly and the panic attacks would get bad. And I'd basically like, my eyes would roll back in my head and I'd kind of twitch and like, you know, it looked like a seizure, but it wasn't. It was a genuine psychosomatic thing. <laughs> so but and so it was just like at that point because i was experiencing so, oh, that that was psychosomatic it was just like no one wanted to look anymore for anything physical despite me saying like i know it's anxiety and this is this ain't it chief um and so like during that mri when i was getting the neurological testing they actually found my qr malformation um but they told me it was completely incidental not to worry about it unless I was getting headaches in the bottom of my head and I was just, we were just like okay I guess it's incidental um which is like a thing but um since I've like you know became more educated about my issues and like I've seen a neurologist now who's you know treating it but I realized like I was experiencing symptoms that you know I wasn't getting like headaches as much um but I you know I definitely have Chiari symptoms and I had them at the time but I think if they had 
acknowledged that I was experiencing symptoms of Chiari, then or they kind of would have thrown off their whole psychosomatic thing. Um, but anyway, so that was what was going on for a while. And it was really frustrating for me um, to be in that experience because nobody was listening to me. Um, and it's like, because I didn't have a medical diagnosis, all my like symptoms that I would report on my like, uh, when they, they do like, there's this like 400 question, like, um, personality diagnostic thing and I scored really high on somatization um, but because I didn't have a medical diagnosis it was like oh you have like health anxiety or like hypochondria um, but like because I had that then nobody was going to take my medical concern seriously so it was kind of just like it, it was like a, a loop and, and I, I, I wasn't able to get anyone to believe me really um, but I ended up going to a residential facility for, um, cause I, I spent, I was just, I, I wasn't stable. I, you know, like that goes in, that's a whole other thing, but for my, um, my mental health and like, I kind of, after that point was stabilizing out more. Um, and I mean, during that time, I remember like, um, screaming on the floor and pain, like my chest hurt. Um, and like, but the staff were just sitting like at the table that was right there and I was just like on the floor screaming in pain. It took like an hour or something, like a really long time for the nurse to get over there. And like they were basically just like, you're fine, calm down. Um, and like there was other times, like I had, I, I would get chest pain a lot. Um, and you know, a couple times we went to the ER and they were like, oh, it's costochondritis, which is a, like an inflammation of the cartilage in your ribs. But like the thing that they had given me said it was like, you know, a temporary thing. So it kept coming back and I was like the, confused. Now I understand that people with, um, like EDS and hypermobility disorders often will have costochondritis longer term. Um, but I was having different pains and like, um, nobody was taking my pain seriously and like... I don't think I even really realized how much pain I was in. Like, if I talk, when I talk to my dad, like, he puts the start up. He, he kind of can pinpoint. Oh, that shouldn't be there. Sorry. Um, he pinpoints the start of, like, my everything earlier than I would. Um, but anyway, I got discharged from my residential. Um, and then that, like, fall, I think. I, so I was 17. I was working at a retirement home. I was a server. And that, during that time is when the pain really got bad. And I think it just was like, I was doing something that was just too much for my body to handle. Um, and I think it just like, everything got really hard around then. Um, and I would, you know, I was so used to just like, sucking it up that I just, and like I was told so many times like, that, you know, there's nothing wrong, you're fine, you're doing this for, I got told attention seeking a lot. Um, that's a whole other story. I'm going to make a video about, like, my, that. Um, cause that's a whole thing in of itself. Um, but anyway, um, so during that time I was, you know, I was working, I was really having a hard time with it, but you know, I, I was pushing myself to go to work, um, but I'd often be in a lot of pain afterwards. Um, and I wasn't really able, like, it got to the point, like, I wasn't really able to be up on the main floor, so they put me with, I don't remember exactly why I switched down to the smaller floor, I think it was, had to do with the pain, um, and stuff, I can't remember, like, I, the timeline of that gets a little hazy, um, but I was going, and I'd be, you know, by the end of the night, I really wouldn't be feeling well, like, my, there would be weird spots in my vision, um, I was so dizzy, like, I'd be pushing a cart because I went around the, to get the, like, coffee carafts from around, um, like, the, the home, like, the nursing home, like, oh, the, or, like, from some of the other offices around, um, but my fingers would hurt too much, like, I just couldn't move them, so I'd be like, I can't, I spilled coffee on myself, I hate the smell of coffee, but I, I don't like coffee at all, but I'd get coffee all over myself because I just couldn't use my fingers, but I, or I'd be so dizzy, or, I, and I'd, make sure I, if I was going to collapse, I would not collapse in front of the residents, or if I was crying from pain, like, nobody would see me. Um, because at that point, I had been told that it was all in my head so many times that I thought I was faking. Like, 
I was like, am I faking being sick? Like, am I, am I faking these symptoms? Am I doing these symptoms for attention? Which is not how that works. Like if you're, if you are worried that you're faking your symptoms, you're not because if you, I, yeah, that logic made sense. Um, it's still there somewhat, but like, cause, um, well, one thing like is that my mom just did not understand. Like she didn't, she just didn't understand. She, she said like, I just don't understand how all of this can be related. Um, and she was frustrated and just thought that I was, you know, kind of being over dramatic because I was getting hurt so much and I was in a lot of pain and she just like didn't understand and and um she understands a bit more now you know now that I've names and like my best friend um from like middle school and high school um both of her sisters have POTS and EDS so her mom's been a really great like resource support um but during that time I was you know you know having a lot of pain like there was I would be at work and I just like at I remember one time I was um, like walking from the nursing home to the train station because um, I was going to take the train home and I just collapsed from pain on the side of the road and I couldn't get up and I had to call my dad to come pick me up um, and it was scary and like I think I went to the ER at least once or the doctor I don't remember exactly um, it's a little hazy exactly when what happened and like I really like to sweep like that's weird but like I it would get to the end of the night and I would try to get my, I would try to switch tasks with my one coworker. I was like hey I really need I really can't sweep like and I had talked to like my boss about it and like she said yeah just ask him if you can switch and he at one point got to the point where it was just like he was so fed up and he didn't understand and he yelled at me he like really yelled at me he wasn't my boss but like he thought he was he was older than me um, he was like, I think he said, call, like yelled at me for being lazy and not wanting to learn how to sweep and like, you need to learn how to sweep. And I was trying to explain like, look, I, I, I'm not, you know, being lazy. Like, uh, like it hurts. Like I could, I physically couldn't do it. I think I had a panic attack, like in the supply closet or something. And like for a little while, and then, you know, the residents were annoyed at me cause I didn't, wasn't getting stuff out in time and like. There was another night that I just collapsed. I was crying on the floor in the kitchen, I, like the one night. I was just in so much pain, and and I was trying to push through it, and I just couldn't. Um, and it just got to the point where I think I ended up going to the hospital um, because I was just in so much pain. I was screaming in pain, um, and they held me a I think night or two. I think I was there for thirty six hours, but like two nights. Um, and they were like, yeah, we don't really know what's going on. Um, and they like discharged me with like a walker. Um, and my mom was annoyed about that. Cause she was like, we could have waited to go see your primary care doctor. None of this would have happened, which is like not how that works, but whatever. Um, and then um, like after that, and I wasn't able to describe the pain at that point. Like it was like, what does it feel like? I'm really not good with describing pain. Um, I, and I, or even pointing to the right place, like, it's, it's frustrating because then I'll be like, I'll say, well, it's kind of here, and then they'll say, oh, if it was a thing, it would be, like, here, and I'm like, oh, well, like, it's there, but, like, they're like, but you just said it was here, and I'm like, I, I was just like, everywhere it hurts, and that was kind of all I could say, and then, um, so I think I got, we tested for, like, the stuff, like, the most obvious stuff, um, and then I got sent to the pain program, and this was right, like, right around my 18th birthday, um, at Nemours Children's Hospital, and they, there they diagnosed me with AMPS, Amplified Musculoskeletal Pain Syndrome, which is a misdiagnosis a lot of kids with EDS and um, hypermobility disorders get, and then, like, after you get that diagnosis, they stop looking, which is frustrating. Um, I think it was around this time that I had got a new PCP, um, and... Anyway, but with the AMPS thing, I was, you know, doing this AMPS protocol, um, and I was seeing the fellow with the pain psychology, which was frustrating because, like, with my mental health history, I really should have, like, not been with the fellow. Um, and we were basically doing CBT 101, and I was like, I've done all of this, I don't understand how, like, this is gonna help, like, I've done all of this, and I'm still in pain, and it was like, well, you've never done it for your, this before. I'm like, that's not how that works. We're not even talking about the pain. Like we were setting goals. And I was like, I have done this so many times. Like, 
<laughs> like, <laughs> I don't understand why this is going to help. Um, and she was explaining this whole thing with like pain pathways and like how like if you're stressed, your pain gets worse. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking It did not make sense to me. None of those descriptors made sense to me um, with how I was experiencing my pain. And she was like, let's do some guided meditations. And I was like, those make me dissociate. No, let's not. Um, and she was like, well, let's just try. I was like, okay, we'll try. I don't understand how this is helpful. You're not listening to me. Um, and we did it. And I just, you know, was kind of like dissociated. And she's like, you know, you can do that when you're in pain. I'm like, I'm always in pain. I can't be in a constant dissociative state. Dissociation's dangerous for me. That's when I, I think that same day I maybe like, I didn't go full like into this. I had stopped having my pseudo seizures or whatever. Um, before like while well, I was in residential they went away um and but but I like learned triggers and one of the big triggers is like guided meditation and like because I, I don't know why but it just is and, and she wasn't listening and it was frustrating I was also in physical therapy and occupational therapy and I was you know talking to those occupational and physical therapists like I think there's something else going on but like they couldn't diagnose me or really do anything um, and like the PT we were doing, I was doing things that I'm now like explicitly not supposed to do. Like we were doing pigeon pose, um, which I can put my leg under my belly all the way up to my face and like completely flat. Like I didn't need that. And we were doing a lot of repetitive exercises, but you know, you know, I guess it helped a little bit. Um, but then I got discharged from that physical therapy and I was still an OT. And then I got discharged from that whole thing because of age, like I aged out or there was a thing. Um, so then I started another round of physical therapy, um, still with the AMPS diagnosis, and I was still talking to my doctor, like, this isn't, like, and my doctor was agreeing, like, yeah, like, what you're describing doesn't really sound like AMPS, um, and I, I think it was during this time that I, and, and I, this primary care doctor was like, yeah, what you have sounds like POTS, and, like, she was being, she was great, I love my PCP now, um, and I think it was during this time one of my friends, um, who I knew I already had POTS and like, you know, we talked about stuff. She posted about, um, she had just been diagnosed with EDS and like mentioned it on Facebook. And I was like, oh, huh, I wonder if I could have that. Um, but then I was like, well, my skin isn't really stretchy. I mean, it, it's a little stretchy. It's just not like, I didn't have the, 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 where it was stretchy. Like, I didn't think like, that's a whole other thing. But like, I do have stretchy skin, just not like, I, I don't know I saw you know that face you know what I'm talking about like the people are like pulling their skin out like right here but it's like I was like oh that's not so bad but so I was like I can't have EDS or like oh I don't get dislocations uh, at the time it wasn't I, I have sense um I have like subluxations especially every day pretty much now but like um and then my you know I was talking to my best friend because both her sisters like I said um have hypermobile EDS and POTS and I was like oh I wonder if that's what I could have or like a hypermobility disorder like I, I like, had learned about it and I was like oh that makes a lot of sense to me um but I tried to mention like to my like physical therapist I was like this hurts and um, every time I would try to talk about how I was in pain I was like we're not going to think about the pain like we're not talking about the pain like you know we're trying to vo ignore the pain like work through the pain and I was like, but this really hurts my joints. And they're like, well, there's nothing wrong with your joints. Like, yeah, if you had a disorder or something wrong with your joints, this could hurt your joints, but you don't have a problem with your joints. And I'm like, but how do we know that I don't have a problem with my joints? Um, wow, this video is getting long. Oh, sorry. If anyone's still watching, like, thanks. I appreciate it. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of this is stuff that a lot of people have heard. Um, but, and, and I was like, but like, if we don't talk about the pain, uh, then like, how do we know that there's not a thing wrong with my joints? Like, I, <laughs> I was annoyed with that. Um, and, and I got put on like my chart that I was like, I would get to the point, like I was always leaving physical therapy crying in pain. Like it hurt so much what we were doing. And it was like, they were, and it was inconsistent because some days I could do some like certain things longer, but like, and I was just in so much pain that, like, they put that I was, like, willfully throwing myself on the floor, but it was, like, I was collapsing in pain. Um, and, like, they just, they put, like, that I was, like, non-compliant, but I was trying. I wanted to get better, but it wasn't helping. It was just hurting so much. And, like, I just didn't understand how it was helping. And, like, they, they, I was still, like, struggling, and I got discharged from physical therapy, and I was, like, what, what now? Um, and... Um, so then I, you know, 
we learned more. I talked to my doctor about potentially having a hypermobility disorder. Um, and I actually saw a geneticist at New Penn, Penn the like Penn Medicine. And um, I found out, actually, I think my friend's mom texted me. Like, I told her, you know, like who I was seeing. She was like, just so you know, a lot of people in the like Philly EDS community have had a bad experience with her. I'm not going to name names. Just, I don't want to let liability on me. Um, I shouldn't have mentioned Penn, but whatever. Um, and, um, so I went, I was like, all right, I'll go to the appointment. You know, like, I'm glad I know this going in. Cause I'd seen a room. Oh yeah. I forgot. I saw a rheumatologist, um, first. Cause it was like something wrong with my joints, you know? Um, and you know, she was like, yeah, they don't, I don't think there's anything wrong. Like I don't see anything. Um, and she did, she told me, well, you know, like the pain centers of the brain are really close to the anxiety and depression. I was like, no, this is not anxiety. I have anxiety. This isn't anxiety. And I'm like, I, cause I think I was at prom and I like, for the first time felt my hip pop out. Like I stood on my leg and it was like, boop. Um, and I, like, if I stand in a certain way, like I can willfully make, do not do this. This is not a good thing, but it, it happens. Like. And I was like, I didn't know, like, pain, I'm like, my, my, I'm like, trying not to cry at that point, crying. I was like, I, but like, my hips, but, and apparently I found this out when I saw the geneticist, the first geneticist, um, she was, that this, uh, rheumatologist had like, you know, like, Mark generalized hyper, like, signs of hypermobility. I'm like, could have told me that, um, that would have been great. Um, and like, it, it like, I, it wasn't like, obviously like, I wasn't trying to self-diagnose, um, but like, but I was trying to like, this makes a lot of sense for my symptoms. But she told me that like, I wasn't hypermobile. She told me that only my hips were hypermobile because they're my worst. And like, it, basically what I did was I, sh I think if I had like pushed harder, but I, I just, I'm not a kind of, I can't, like, I just don't feel comfortable doing that kind of pushing of like doctors and stuff. But like, you know, from what I've heard is you kind of have to be kind of more severe for her to diagnose you, which is frustrating. But she told me, like, oh, yeah, your hips are definitely hypermobile. But, like, I, now I, like, I'm almost immediately after. I was like, oh, I should have showed her this. I should have showed her this. But, like, she told me, like, you're fine. Like, you know, maybe there's something. I was like, I don't know what to do with this. Like, but I, I knew going into that appointment that, like, not everyone had had a great experience. So, like, I didn't know what to do. I was kind of, like, in this weird state of limbo where it was, like, I decided to like learn more and I found out that a lot of other people had had similar experiences with her um, and then had gone on to actually get diagnosed with um, different types of EDS or hypermobility spectrum disorders so um, after having that appointment so I was like alright I'll get a second opinion um, and I'm really really glad I did um, because um, I went and I saw um, so I that was in like March or something that I saw that geneticist and then like I tried and I was actually able to get an appointment really quickly for the second geneticist I saw at Cooper. I'm sad, she moved to New York. I need to find a new geneticist now. And like, there's not a lot because the ones at the main hospital are, I don't I don't, I don't want to go back to her. Um, but um, like, so I was able to go see that geneticist and um, you know, I, you know, looked at all my symptoms and you know like she said she diagnosed me with finally like with a hypermobility spectrum disorder um which which is I have a really it's kind of weird though because I definitely I'll definitely try to talk about this later is because it's like having HSD you can have a lot of the same problems as people with hypermobile EDS but like you don't people don't talk about it as much so it's weird um she did genetic testing um, just to rule out vascular EDS, especially, um, and I do have a genetic mutation, but it's, like, of unknown significance, so it's, like, I could still have classical EDS, which is part of why I want to find a new geneticist, because, like, since then, like, my cardiologist, I see a cardiologist who specializes in dysautonomia, since then I've started having more frequent, like, joint subluxations and dislocations, um, and, um, that my cardiologist is like, yeah, at this point, like, I would be surprised if it wasn't EDS and like my skin's been probably like, I have a, right now I have like a scar from when I had an abscess removed in my armpit over a year ago. And this weekend, wait, what day is it? It's Friday. Like the past couple days, um, it's been like opening back up, which is real fun, but it was so good to finally get, have that diagnosis. So like, 
Um, and now I see physical therapists who have worked with hypermobile patients before. And I, like, for this round of physical therapy, um, this most recent one, um, I made the most progress, like, of any of them. Um, and I know what I can avoid. So having that di diagnosis is incredibly important because I know I have a name for it. I also, like know what to do to take care of myself I've found a community um and I just I'm really lucky too because now I find I'm I'm able to make sure like my doctors know what's going on so I see I see a lot of doctors that um have um you know kind of are familiar with what I'm going on so like I got diagnosed first with um with that hypermobility spectrum disorder and then I finally got my official POTS diagnosis um and August, which if you don't, I got, and then, um, over the summer I started having GI symptoms, um, and I got diagnosed with mild gastroparesis in October, um, I knew I had the Chiari malformation, um, but I've seen a neurologist now to follow that, um, and I have, I, my podiatrist sees a lot of EDS and hypermobile patients, and apparently my feet are, like, super hypermobile, and you can see it on x-rays and, like, my fingers, I see a hand therapist right now, and I'm in the process of ordering my ring splints um, for my fingertips, which I'm hoping will help because I'm an art student, and it kind of sucks to be an art student who has difficulty um, holding a pencil for very long sometimes. And I see a lot of doctors that are familiar with my conditions, and oh, and right now I just got some testing done to check for mast cell activation syndrome. I'm still waiting to hear back of the results for that. So like you can see, I have a lot of the comorbidities too. Um, but like, it's really important to find a doctor that'll believe you. And it's just like such a relief when you do. And so, yeah, that's my di you're a diagnosis. I'm sorry this video is so long. If you're still watching, thank you so much. If you're still looking for your diagnosis, keep going. Um, maybe EDS or hypermobility spectrum disorder isn't the right diagnosis for you. It was for me, um, or HSD was for me. And, but, you know, whatever it is, like, <laughs> you, I've had so many doctors not believe me. Um, and so many pro medical and mental health professionals tell me, like, that there's nothing wrong physically. Um, but I trust your gut. I mean, like, you, I don't want to get called out for being, like, pro self-diagnosis. But, like, I'm pro-advocacy, so... I hope that you, anyone who's watching this, who's trying to figure out what's going on with their body, that you find your your answer soon, too. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys later this month. I'm probably going to make a couple more videos about my hypermobility disorder this month. Bye!